Hi, everybody. My name is Matt, and we're here uh, for another episode of the Everyday Carry podcast, Everyday Carry Options podcast. And today I'm here with uh, the one and only Jeffrey Bluefman. How are you doing today, Jeff? And Jeff is frozen. <laughs> well, my name is Matt. I'm here uh, with the Everyday Carry Options podcast. And I think Jeff is, oh, there's Jeff. Uh, I'm it's, here with Jeff Blueman. Hi. Hi. I don't know what just happened there. It kicked, I'm, me, out. It kicked me out as soon as he started to <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is what happens when I'm running the ship. Alex isn't with us today. Um, so uh, buckle in, kids. We're going to see how I do. Uh, anyway, we're here with the one and only Jeff Blueman. Uh, really excited to have you on today, man. We're going to be talking about the personal protection paradigm. Jeff, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about you? Okay, well, uh, I, you know, thank you very much for having me on the show. Um, I, I I got the pleasure of working with Matt in a class, and we were partnered up, and it was it was awesome. And I just immediately, uh, we were just like immediately best friends. So really happy to be on here, man, and, and glad that you're doing this. You know, because I think you got a lot of good stuff to share. Um, but yeah, a little bit about me. Um, been shooting and doing martial arts since um, about seven years old. Uh, so that's a lot of time just, uh, training and on the gun and also doing martial arts. Uh, but yeah. And then come about 2004, I took my formal, my first formal firearms training class and was like, Oh my God, there's so much I don't know. And that kind of lit a fire under my butt. And I was like, okay, well, this is something I'm passionate about. I've always been into quote unquote guns. I was always like the, you know, resident gun guy. And now I want to learn how to actually really use them under people who are experts. And since then, I've logged a lot of training hours and been mentored by uh, some of whom I consider the, the best in the industry. Um, and if I'm any good at what I do and what I teach, then it is more a reflection on them and their patients than anything really I ever did. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, the people that you have trained with are some of the the biggest names in the business. I mean, and you, what's, what's great about Jeff is, um, he is such a, he's such a broad base. It's not just guns for him. It's, uh, different, different styles of combatants. So you started, what was it? Karate when you were a kid, then you no, know, you do Brazilian, ju Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I talked to him, Hey man, I'm on my way back from a boxing class or, you know, he's always doing something amazing, something cool, something always bettering himself. So what, what was it today? What did you do today? Uh, to, I unmuted myself. Good uh, timing with my muting skills. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, today was uh, the 10 a.m. Jiu-Jitsu class. I train. Uh, well, for the past four years, I've been training uh, under Daniel Gracie and uh, Sadeko Onario at uh, Henzo Gracie Philly, which is uh, about five minute drive from my house. So I'm really lucky with that. Um, so I, I do a lot of gi jiu-jitsu. Uh, there's gi jiu-jitsu and there's no gi jiu-jitsu. Uh, gi is like the kimono looking thing that we wear uh, where you actually have the belt on and stuff like that. And then no gi would be shorts and and, and a t-shirt and a essentially um, or an Under Armour style shirt and you don't wear a belt. And that would be what uh, you'd see when you watch UFC and stuff. You know, okay. they're no longer... They're no longer allowed to wear gis. The early UFCs, which were uh, with Hoist Gracie, when he like basically brought that that was the hate the the uh i guess the initial real coming of jujitsu to this country and made it uh in in the public eye uh was was the original ufcs and was hoist gracie just in there with his gi on and his black belt and just challenging people of any weight class um and any skill level and any um, method of, of fighting style like, hey, we don't we don't have time limit. Uh, the only rules are no eye gouging, no fish hooking. You could hit to the groin, you could hit to the back of the head, you could kick people in the head when they were on the ground. Like there, it was pretty much no holds barred. Um, yeah, it was and, it was brutal. It was oh, really brutal. Oh, they're and they're awesome fights. They're oh, and, yeah. and Hoist Gracie. Well, I think he's like six one, and he was like one hundred and sixty pounds, one hundred and seventy pounds, uh, and he just he just destroyed people. Nobody had seen anything like that. Um, and now people had been doing a little bit of jiu-jitsu in the States, obviously, before then. But that was really uh, when it, it came into the public eye. And since then, I mean, now you – hell, there's, there's jiu-jitsu, Brazilian jiu-jitsu schools all over the country. 
And um, so it, it's a really cool thing. I, I love Brazilian jiu-jitsu uh, for, for a multitude of reasons. I'm happy to go, go on about that. But to get back to your original question, um, yeah, I've done a lot of different martial arts. Uh, I was raised doing traditional martial arts, um, started doing Kempo Karate when I was very young, and then did Taekwondo. I've done Southern Shaolin style Kung Fu and Western style boxing and kickboxing. Uh, I'm a brown belt in Tang Soo Do uh, under uh, Master Andy Carr. And that was a really tough gym. Um, and I'm hopefully going to be testing for black belt because I found a, I reconnected with a dude at jujitsu school who's a second degree under nice. Andy Carr. Um, and Andy Carr is, is no longer kind of in the picture for, for a little while. Um, so I just found out that this guy, Brian King, who still, who still trains people, um, in, in karate and Tang Soo Do, he can, tr he can actually give me a black belt test because it's a really big deal. It's not just like you come in and do some forms. In fact, you don't even start doing the forms with in this school at this school until after your black belt forms being katas or hyungs, depending on uh, what you, you know which art you do. Uh, and it's it's like he wouldn't be doing the three day the three day test for me because I'd be the only person testing. So it'd be probably like twenty four hours or more uh, of you know sleep that you, you, you're not, and then it culminates with me I guess fighting. Uh, eight rounds. He didn't. He couldn't tell me too much about it, obviously, because it's kind of secretive. But eight rounds, eight fresh opponents, um, and they just, you know, you, you, hopefully I don't get injured. And but the, the biggest thing is not quitting. And the other component of that is I have to have a, a sanctioned fight. So my friends uh, who have been wanting me to fight for a long time, it would be an American style kickboxing match and a sanctioned fight. So I'll announce that when it is happening. Um, nice. So I'm, nice. I'm training really hard. I started striking again, which yeah. feels really good to everything but my joints. <laughs> <laughs> that man, I'll tell you. Yes. Oh, man. I'm old. I'm starting to feel old. <laughs> hey, hey, don't say that because I think I got you by a year or two, and I'm, feel, I'm, I'm finally starting to feel pretty good. So. Well, that's good. Joint <laughs> health. Well, I'll, I'll send you yes. my links for joint health supplements that, that, are, that are helping. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I should have been taking notes while you were talking because I – just blew a blew an you know blew something right out of my brain completely forgot well I'll let's yeah yeah let's talk a little bit about okay most people are going to be watching the show thinking about uh -huh. carrying carrying a gun so yeah first let, let first steps in carrying a gun first steps um what are your thoughts first steps that's a, a really uh broad but very good question um First steps of carrying a gun. Uh, first things first is if you, th you think of what I want to do with this show and with answering these questions, because I know that at least some of your target audience is going to be new gun owners and people yes. that are kind of interested uh, in, in self-protection is you should not, first of all, let's talk about what you should not do. Um, and then I'll kind of build into what you should do, at least in my, in, in my opinion is don't carry a gun if you are not competent with it and you are not competent with uh, draw, producing it, you know, i.e. draw a stroke or presenting the gun. Um, additionally, I also would not carry the gun unless you are familiar with uh, use of lethal force laws, you know? Um, so having said that, I would suggest you learn how to use it, learn how to draw it in a robust fashion. So, you know, from a professional instructor, not like, uh, you know, from a, just a YouTube video. And That's what, that was going to be my, I was leading into that. Yeah, um, go ahead. Oh, you, you, go ahead. Okay, so this is, this. I think this will apply to how do I find um, a Brazilian jiu-jitsu gym mm -hmm. and not end up at Rex Kwando, like right. grab my wrist, my other wrist. Right. You know, do you want to get kicked <laughs> with these pants on? Roundhouse right. face, roundhouse kick to the face? No. But how do I make sure I don't end up at Rex Kwando? And then how do I make sure I don't end up with some ding dong that knows less than I do. And he's teaching me about guns. Like, do I, do I find that like the biggest tough guy on YouTube? I know we both know the answer to that is no, but how do, <laughs> how do I find, how do I find good information and how, how do I verify that? Because that's a question I always get. And I'm sure you do too. Mm. Yeah. Um, that's a good question. And, and I, I, I'm going to answer that. Um, and let me just address the last part of, of the last question, which is about, I just want to say the importance of understanding legalities and use of lethal force. And the way that you do that is, is from, 
either a lawyer who specializes in, in self-defense law. Okay. There's some great books out there. Uh, one of whom, one author is Masad Ayub. He's an excellent author. Um, there's, oh, what the, is the name of the guy? Oh, I have his book in the other room. But yeah, I would start with the Masada Yub stuff. Uh, the other thing that I would strongly, I cannot encourage people enough. And if you even need to save up for it and, and you know, eat uh, in a, a little bit more conservatively for a week, it's worth it. Uh, but join the Armed Citizens Legal Defense Network, and they will send you a ton, a gaggle of information about how to uh, well instructional videos that are in, in, uh, informative videos on use of lethal force and and that all that goes into that you know what to say to the police what not to say to the police what what is considered a good shoot or a bad shoot you know these are things that are absolutely essential because let's say that you do carry the gun okay so you got the gun you got the training you can produce the gun uh shoot the gun accurately on demand Okay, that's important. So accuracy on demand. But I also want to make sure that I understand, well, you know, if somebody pushes me, can I shoot them? You know, these are questions that, and these are like really, re, you know, people, people I just don't understand. You know, a lot of times they just don't think it. They think it's going to be a clear cut. Okay, this guy has a knife and he says, F you. And I say, oh no. And he says, F you, I'm going to stab you in the face now. And then he starts coming at you and you've got time and distance uh, and you draw it and you shoot him and he's dead and you're the hero. It's probably not going to be like that, right? There's right. going to be a lot of gray area. So finding out and figuring that out is part of being a responsible gun owner and a responsible gun carrier. And that's why, you know, I was so happy to come on here, Matt, because you're opening up people's minds with these shows, right? about how to be responsible with this thing. Look, this can't make a bed. This can't make me coffee. All this can do is destroy things. Right. Either people Absolutely. or property, right? <laughs> right. And I like what you said. And and we make it a point to say uh, the same thing on this show. You never said um, a safe anything. You said irresponsible. Make a Correct. responsible decision. Be a responsible person. Don't be a safe person. Be a, be a responsible person. There is a, yeah. there's a very big difference uh, in in between you know, between those two, two two things, no one will ever hand you a gun and say, it, or point a gun at you and say, "Oh, bro, but it's unresponsible." No, there is no responsible because if you were being responsible, you wouldn't point the gun at me or at Jeff. You say, "Oh, it's unsafe," so I can be irresponsible. That doesn't work, correct? Yeah, that's an interesting way of putting it for sure. Um, you know, I, I got into the habit really of using that word responsible a lot more frequently than safe by uh, uh, one of my mentors. And you've, you, you met Gary, you met Gary. I met Gary. Gary's awesome. Gary yeah, is Gary, awesome. Gary is a cool cat and he <laughs> knows his stuff. Um, and he said that you cannot, by uh, definition, you cannot be safe with a deadly weapon just because of the intention of the gun, it's not, it'd be like, you could be safe with a hand grenade. No, you can be responsible and not damage yourself and that's others. good so way that's, to put it. You know, so you, you can't be safe with it. You can just be responsible with it, you know? Um, and I think that that's just a, a distinction that I want people to think more and more about because honestly, like I've been in the game for a while and I, I really thought about that a lot and it wasn't just an immediate click. It was like, oh, that makes sense, but ponder that These yeah unwrap that a bit you know unbox yeah. that and yeah i get it I, yeah, I, I i thought the same thing the first time i heard i think the first time i heard you got you talk about it was on your show uh, practically tactical you brought mm -hmm. it up and ever since then i've i've been making that a part of you know uh, my the way i the way i teach you know uh, students just yeah. just cpl classes or the way i talk to other people uh, or on this show about it it is yeah. about responsibility yeah. Um, and I think that's a very important distinction. So I'm really happy that you're kind of, you, 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 you know, you, you're on that, on that wagon. Uh, yes. Because I think it's important. I think it's an important distinction uh, because honestly, like the verbiage and, and the words that we use to describe and teach people is really important. Really, really important. It is. It is and, uh, something I'm sure that you've run into uh, in taking other classes, being a student and being an instructor is speaking to the student, not at them or over their heads. Mm -hmm. Make it, there's no reason um, at entry level or beginner level classes that 
we need to use all of the cool guy tactical tactical technical jargon. We make to keep everything um, well beginner level, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't even use it when I'm teaching more advanced shooters because I, I think that language, the purpose of language is communication. And I want communication to be succinct. I want it to be clear. And I want it to be, uh, I don't want people to have to dissect it. And I find that a, a, I have come across instructors, as I'm sure you have. And this could be anything. You know, this doesn't, this is not um, at, uh, unique to firearms instruction. You, this happens in nursing school. This happens in a hospital when you've got a doctor who comes into a room to talk to a patient uh, and they're using jargon. Nobody knows what they're talking about. Um, and that is, one, first of all, I think inappropriate because you're no longer communicating. You're just creating noise <laughs> with your right, mouth. Right. Well, and, I think and it too. Yeah. yeah. And to, to, to just, let me say this quick. It's it, a lot. Some people use it as a tool, a tactic, and it's called hiding behind your intelligence. Ah, that's exactly where I was going. Yeah. Good. That very good. Very good. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. I'll be here yeah. for the next hour. <laughs> yes. 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 Tip your tip your waitresses. Uh, no, but, but really, it, 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 it creates a barrier between you and the student, you and the patient, whatever. And now I'm infallible. Yeah. Right? You can't exactly. do that. You, if it, one of the things is I, I always say is, hey, if you don't believe me, that's fine. Ask questions. I will, you know, I'll give examples. I'll prove what I'm talking about. You don't have right. to believe it just for my word. Let's let's unwrap it. Let's unbox it. Pack, you know, figure out what's going on, and we can show how things work. That's what I like so much about you know some of the instructors that I've uh, worked with, like uh, Trek. I learned a lot from being your partner in uh, the Freddie Asuna class, uh, Greenside Training, and you know um, from you. I learned a lot from you just as being oh. your partner. So, um, oh, thank you. absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so yeah. Well, okay. Here's a question for you. Mm -hmm. I just realized that the world is it, the world is what it is. I'm and I'm seeing that for the first time, okay? And mm. I, I I don't know, you know, I'm I'm realizing that uh, I I need to find I need to start learning about this personal protection paradigm. It's not just guns. You know, because you can't you can't go to a gun over everything, correct? Yes, correct. Okay. So so there are times where you you can you still have to defend yourself, but it doesn't call for deadly force, right? Correct. Right. Okay. So, where do people start with that? Like, what do you think is a good way for people to get their feet wet? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, we're talking kind of like a training path type thing. Yes. Uh, but first of all, we, we've been using this word, and, and this is uh, what I had suggested: the self-protection paradigm. First, let me de define. Uh, paradigm, which is it's a typical example or pattern of something or a model. So in this case, we're using it uh, in terms of a model, a model of self-protection. Um, so what does that model look like? Uh, first of all, it's multifaceted, which is going back to your question. It's not just the gun. It's not just the gun. There is the combatives component, which is uh, uh, an unarmed thing. So I, or you know, or having a knife or whatnot, you know, non-gun related type thing. Uh, then there is the firearm component. And then there is the medical component, which is actually really simple. Mm -hmm. People hear medical and they think, oh my God, I'm not a doctor. No, neither am I. And I never will be. <laughs> but keeping someone, a high, uh, keeping someone alive until a higher echelon of care can get there is really not that complicated or difficult. It's uh, it's it's not that hard, and we need to know that because if we think about it, a lot of people get scared talking about medical because in order to talk about medical, you have to put yourself in the place that you may also be injured, mm. right? Or your loved right. one may be injured. You know, it, guess what? I have one of these. Guess what? He may have one of these, right? Or she, or they. So the idea that I'm not going to take, I'm not, nobody ever thinks about themselves sustaining damage in a, in a, in a critical threat to life stress uh, incident. You may, you may, you know, your first, you, more than likely, you know, at least what I'm trying to prepare for, especially with the combatives and work, working in a weapons-based environment. Of course, there are the examples where, you know, I draw, I can go to full extension in my presentation. I press a trigger as many times as necessary until he's no longer doing what he's doing. Um, 
but I think that we need to prepare for the eventuality that it is uh, I'm either in a standing grappling or a horizontal grappling match and there are guns and weapons and knives and shivs and bats involved. You, uh, you follow me? So a clinch or a grounded type fight. Uh, so that's really important because the first time you know you're in a fight, it may be you getting clocked in the side of the head more than likely um, and pummeled. You know, that may be your right. first indication that, oh, oh, my God, I'm in a fight for my life now. And now I'm in a slightly. Um, uh, I, I'm slightly less aware. I'm looking for the word uh, diminished. Um, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I'm in a slightly diminished. diminished capacity now because every every fight, because we're good guys and we're not going in like terrorists and shooting good guys. Right. Everybody. Yeah. Right. Everybody. Uh, we are going to, by definition, be in a counter ambush type scenario, right? Somebody's going to be ambushing us. And I don't mean they're sitting by the tree line and they open up the machine guns. That's <laughs> not like, you know, right. That's murder. Uh, but uh, <laughs> you're right. People think ambush. They're like, oh, we rushed the ambush. I'm like, dude, no, no, no. I'm just talking about like, just, you know, forget it. <laughs> so you know, we're going to be behind the curve. We are going to be, it's, um, you know, like I didn't have an opportunity to really hydrate after jiu-jitsu as much as I wanted to. So I'm very slow coming up with words. But uh, there's going to be, we're, we're gonna, there's going to be a deficiency uh, behind how much time we have to respond, right? Uh, I, I'll think of the verbiage here in a minute. I was, I was trying to think of some, some of the words that Craig's used, uh, South Narc, uh, Craig Douglas. Craig Douglas, is, yeah. yeah. I need initiative, to get in with him, too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, initiative uh, deficit. So we're going to be behind with that because they're going to be the ones that are presenting us with violence that we're then responding to, understand? Yes. So you've got to be, you're, you've, you've drawn the short straw in the equation and now you've got to recover lost ground. Correct? Yeah. Right. right. I mean, I mean, and viewers think about this, right? Well, yeah, yes. It, yeah. Good. Yeah. Every time you think of, you know, people, people have their, you know, grandized thought of how their gunfight is going to happen. And it's, I'm always the, the bad guy's going to have his gun pointed at the, a good guy, and it's not going to be me. And I'm going to have all the time that I need to produce my gun, take my time, take a breath, get good sight picture, get good sight alignment, and press off one, two, three, five, ten, twelve shots, whatever it takes. Right? Well, we all think. Well, everybody has thought that, and they've also thought that they're never going to get punched in a single fist fight. But they're always okay. going to be. It's a one shot knockout deal, and it does not happen that way very often. Right. So you're you are absolutely right. We need to be prepared to be completely blindsided by either being shot, being struck, being attacked, or medical in, med in a medical situation or any case. Um, we come across a lot more accidents on the highway than we do gunshots or mm -hmm. gunfights. So, you know, being able to, maybe it's not even, maybe it's not even the, uh, the stranger on, you know, the opposite side of the highway. Maybe it's your car that's been in an accident and you've got wife, kids, husband, you know, significant other, anybody, they're bleeding out. And all you right. have is your gun. And I talked about this last time. It's, well, all I have is a gun. And if I shoot them, that's not solving the problem. I really right. wish I had a tourniquet. Right. And I mean, you could use your gun as a windlass. But, right. I thought uh, the same thing. <laughs> Unload it that first. Was, that's going to be a weird, weird windlass. Um, yeah, the, 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 the verbiage that I was uh, trying to um, pull out of one of the file folders in my brain is unequal initiative. There's going to be an unequal initiative when, uh, you know, uh, i.e. you're going to be responding to something more than likely. Um, at least be prepared for it. Don't, you know, be realistic with the scenarios. If you're always playing the same scenario of you're in line, you know, three people, you know, are in front of you and the guy at the, the checkout pulls out a gun and starts shooting the person behind the counter. Well, then that's, that's an easy one. Shoot the guy, right? That's a pretty easy one. Uh, do I have to wait for him to represent himself? This is another one that messes with people. They're like, I, I ask people when I'm doing the uh, the classes and stuff, uh, can you shoot someone in the back? And inevitably someone will say no. I'm like, well, why not? And they're like, well, you can't because they, they think in their mind that they're either, that the person's either running or that for some legality reason that if they, you shoot them in the back, you're like, you're done and that they're not a threat. Well, if that person is in the act of, and, and you know the totality of the circumstances, i.e. the guy that's in line and starts shooting the person behind the counter, that's, you know, intent to commit murder.
or him in the back. Of course. Right. Why would I? Well, you know, what do I have to do? Hey, you wait for him to represent himself to me so that I can get his eyes on my eyes locked on and then I can shoot him. No, no. I mean, I, you know, if, if I'm of the mind that I want to uh, have a, a response to that and, and um, then, then that's probably a better idea for me to just shoot them in the back as many times as necessary. If I want to intervene in that, knowing the totality of the circumstances, because honestly, when you get involved with third party intervention, that can be a very slippery slope and very dangerous but if I'm watching that unfold in front of me, I'm not going to let that guy just kill the, the, the clerk, you know. Now, let me ask you this for the for the viewers. Yeah, yeah. That's a, a slippery slope. Now, is that because you are defending somebody and it's got, it's got nothing to do with you? Or is it because you may not know the totality of the circumstances, i.e. you don't really know what's going on? It might be an undercover police officer trying to make an arrest while someone's screaming rape. Now, is, the, the, go ahead. Now, what do you, is, which one of those, just for everybody that's watching. Yeah. Uh, the what? latter of the two is what okay. I'm more concerned about. Right. Um, so I, so you turn the corner and you see someone with a, uh, whose hands are interlaced behind their head and going, please don't shoot me. Please don't shoot me. Is on their knees and a guy with a gun, you know, yelling something. And now you can't really hear what's going on because now you got this, this rush of adrenaline and cortisol and all this crap in your system. Um, is it a good idea for you to draw your gun and shoot him or draw your gun and start issuing verbal commands to him? Or is it a better idea for you to get back behind that corner and make a phone call to police? You don't know the totality of the circumstances. Maybe that is the undercover narcotics agent that finally busted the dope dealer on the corner who's been peddling heroin to the high schoolers right so you can't just unless and and i want people to really think about this and, and if you don't agree with this then there's something kind of wrong with you how can you then let me pose this question how can you respond to something unless you know the totality of the circumstances Right. You, you, you can't. Well, you can, but you may be in the wrong. So you take out your Wonder Blaster 3000, as <laughs> Steve likes to Steve Fish likes to say, and you just pepper the guy, zipper him up and down with these rounds. And uh, homeboy on his knees gets up and runs now. So now you just shot a cop and you let a suspect go. Big win. No, no. Yeah, that's you're not working. getting any high fives that day. No high fives. No points yeah. awarded. <laughs> and uh, and I'll never forget that because I learned just that scenario uh, in my first force on force class. I drove all the way out to Indiana um, to train with Shay Van Vleiman. He was working for a different company at that time, but now he has a company called uh, Mindset Laboratory, and he's one of the best in the business. I ever? had I had a very similar experience with uh, a low light class with Trek. Completely yeah. flipped my brain upside down. Mm -hmm. What were you saying about your friend? Sorry. Uh, my friend. I don't Shay Van. Oh, no. Uh, laboratories. He's, I think, one of the best in the business. So if, if anyone is out in, uh, where did I say he was? Indiana. Indiana. <laughs> Indiana. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he actually does some, uh, some very interesting classes, too, about low light force on force and using the uh, flashlight as an impact tool um, in a combative type role so it, it, he's a he's a squared away dude really really good that sounds interesting i'd like to get involved with that absolutely yep. i mean it until you until you take a low light class you know so everybody that's taking a class in the dark um <laughs> you yep. don't have any idea like well, well how hard can it be you use your flashlight and you use your gun <laughs> there's a lot to it there's a lot more to it um it's mm -hmm. really cool stuff. Really cool. Yeah. Um, and to go back to your uh, question here a little while ago, how do you find a good BJJ gym um, or BJJ Academy? Like we call our place an academy um, rather than a gym or a school. Um, and in fact, if you want to know why you could watch uh, the practically tactical episode that I had Daniel Gracie on Daniel Gracie is one of the Gracie's. And uh, he, so he's kind of a big deal. He's a six degree uh, black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So and he's, yeah, that's a big deal. I love this guy. He's I, I love the Brazilian people. Like I've never met a Brazilian I didn't like. They're just so fun and passionate and full of life, and they're never on time. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
they're just they're just like the, so don't yeah. have them on the show then right like tell them no. two oh. hours later well no I'm it's just, just like yeah uh, i think he showed up on time for the show which was which was funny but anyway yeah no he, he looks like him. he's always having fun every time i see him in a picture with you it's always like, yeah you guys look like you're having a blast every time we are it's uh, that's why i i I just love jujitsu. It's just great. The people that you meet and, and all that. But the way that you can find that out is uh, what I have done really is, is if you don't, if you, so let's say you've got, Oh man, I found this Brazilian jujitsu gym or this MMA gym or whatever. That's uh, 20 minutes away. I want to start. This is one of the opportunities where you're more than welcome to email me, Jeff at armeddynamics.com. Maybe uh, you guys, you and Alex can put this in the description box, my, my email and stuff, um, and say, hey, I found this place. And then I will not know who they are. <laughs> but, <laughs> right. but, but I will I will forward that information to one of the people that I know because, honestly, the, 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 the Brazilian jiu-jitsu world is very small. Um, so – we could find out. I'll have one of my my friends look and find out like whose instructor is and stuff like that, and and make a recommendation about whether to go or not, or be like, no, this guy's a total unknown, and I have no idea. Uh, so that's one thing. And the other thing you could do, even though you may not have eyes for it, uh, but regardless, is let's say you get the blessing of whomever, or you you've got a friend who's a black belt, but he's just a couple states away, and he says, oh yeah, you go to this gym, go there, uh, and watch a class. Go there and watch a club. I don't care what it is, a boxing, jujitsu, karate, whatever it is. And they should be fine with that. And if they're not, then walk. That'd be insane. That I mean, I've never had the experience of somebody not allowing me to watch a class. Uh, and if they do that, then that's super shady. I would never, ever, I wouldn't even, don't do that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Suffice to okay. Say. Um, but yeah, watch a class and, you know, just feel the vibes. Honestly, you know, like if you if you don't like the vibe you get there, then you should, don't go there. Now, just be able to differentiate. You may be a little bit intimidated, you know, right? right. Because, like, I had I brought one of my friends and uh, uh, one of one of my um, friends who'd never done any martial arts, never done anything like that. He's the sweetest guy you've, you've ever met. Into uh, at the, to Henzo Gracie Philly Academy. And I was going to go over some managing unknown contacts with him in like the back room. And there were a bunch of people rolling and stuff. And he's, he said later, like, wow, he was so intimidated when he walked in, but everybody was so nice. And he just felt like welcome, you know, but you walk into a place like that and you've never done it before. Uh, you know, we, t people that have been doing it for a while or whatever, we take it for granted. We don't really get nervous and stuff. And we walk in and we're not really intimidated because we kind of know what is going on. Um, so if it's intimidation under, investigate that feeling a little bit if it's because they're dicks or they're really sorry i don't know it's okay we'll we'll figure it out <laughs> yeah uh, it, family friendly show jeff is uh and, and by that he's, i mean he's real if he's they're real, folks. if they're a bunch of richards right <laughs> that's my cover up then uh well i was doing so good with not cussing i cuss a lot it's okay and um you know but if you if you walk in there and you get a, a bad feeling or then trust that feeling, you know, trust that feeling, find another place. Um, yeah. So. Sorry about that. No, you're good. Stupid phone. Um, I think you're going to, people will find, you know what? I've been to several classes I, and I don't ever go to a class uh, with anybody. I go to a class by myself. Yeah. Uh, I'm talking about firearms classes. I'm sorry. And it's because I like to have that little bit of a nervous feel. And I know I'm not, by any means, Jeff, I've actually, I've never shot with you, but I'm not a pro and I'm, I can hold my own. I'm not great. Um, but I like the idea of going by myself mm -hmm. so I can, I can kind of unwind and unwrap the whole class on my drive home. I can kind of hype myself up a little too much on the way there. And then I get there and things calm down really quickly. But when you take your first class, it is a little bit nerve wracking. My first one, I drove out of state by myself, slept in my truck, you know? Um, and that was a, it is an unnerving thing because you don't know what you don't know. Um, right. And I think with, uh, a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu class, like Jeff has been pushing me, well, talking to me, not pushing me, uh, really recommending that I get into a uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu uh, class, academy, something, so I can start uh, furthering mm -hmm. my, my education and, you know, add another tool to my toolbox. And 
I told you about an opportunity that's you know, been presented yeah. to uh, the MDFI alumni, which I'm a part of. So I'm going, I'm looking into that and I want to see if I can make it work in my schedule, but I will be nervous. I will be not, not oh, nervous, yeah. but I, you know, I'm 37 years old. I haven't been to a fist fight since I was 25. Right. You know, I'm, it's been a long time. So I've been slammed around, you know? So right. um, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'll, you know, I'll do like kind of a, nope, I'll, pull my, I'll pull my headphones out is what I'll do. But I'll do kind of a, a video blog about it on the, the page, and I'll cool. post, post uh, as your recommendation, post cool. um, first class and as I learn what's going on. But, um, yeah, I think, it'll be, I think it'll be awesome. So, well, I forgot what I was going to ask you next. Darn it. <laughs> oh, hold on. SM, that's the person's initials, Jiu-Jitsu. Jeff, wondering if you know of any credible instructors around the Grand Rapids, Michigan area. <laughs> We're just talking about it. <laughs> That's, That's awesome. awesome. I love That's that awesome. because you know what? I, I I love that, and and I'm willing to. I mean, it's not really any trouble, but you know, take the time to pass it on and get in for, get the uh, the answer, and then pass it back to this person because I know how much jujitsu has helped me. In, in what ways? In what ways? In um, I mean, I'm in the, this is the most stressful time of my life with school and with father, my father passing and just everything. Um, but I'm doing great now. Now that third quarter is over, um, it makes you humble is the biggest thing. Uh, it makes you calmer. Um, it's a, a social outlet. It's a physical outlet. You develop, you make friends, uh, in every conceivable way. It, it it has helped me. It has benefited me. It has made me. It honestly, it's made me a better person. Um, you know, and aside from the fact that you're also learning a very uh, applicable uh, fighting art. You know, um, you know, it it, it it physically more fit. Uh, your core gets really strong. You know, the more you do it, your grip strength gets crazy. Mm -hmm. In all of those ways. Okay, so let's say. <clears throat> I bought my first gun. I've been to the range a few times, and now I'm looking at the fact that I am not, I'm kind of strapped for cash. I, I got to make a decision. So do I start taking a couple of gun classes, or do I find myself uh, whatever martial arts you want to you know get yourself into? Maybe you're not maybe you're not interested in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I don't know, but do I go for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? You know, do I go for you know self defense without a gun? Or do I go take some gun classes? What do you think? And tell me why. I mean, I know what I think. I'm pretty sure I know what your answer is going to be. But I want you. I want to hear how you what you have to say. Well, the it's a little bit. It's a great question, but it's a little bit apples and oranges because of the time commitment involved. You can go and take a two day class for firearms, and then have at least somewhat of a skill set to then go and practice. Whereas, you know, jujitsu or boxing or any any martial art. Um, that you're going to take is going to require a, a major time investment. You know, you're not going to be, you're going to really stink at jujitsu for the first six months, really. I mean, unless you're just absolutely athletically, physically gifted, which I am not, I don't think. Um, I have come across people that are, <laughs> by the way, <laughs> in jujitsu. But yeah, so it, it, I would say get, take the firearms class, understand. Again, going back to what we first talked about, uh, how to be responsible, responsible gun handling, how to produce and draw and present the pistol from concealment and then understanding legalities. And then then you'll have some stuff to study and work on the range so that you've got that at least for the foreseeable month or months or years or year rather to work on. You know, and that's a that's a big thing, like stay in touch with your instructor that teaches you uh, and, and ask when you're at the firearms training class, like, how can I how can I not practice? You know, like, what's a good thing for me to do for the, for the next six months? And they should be able to at least and you should take notes. Don't expect to remember it because you you will not. <laughs> uh, right. You will not take notes, write down the drills that he tells you to do and how to do them and then work on that. But and then make sure. And so then the second component of that would be uh find oh i just fixed my chair uh, uh would be find a jiu-jitsu gym and because that's going to be a, a greater time investment and commitment uh but of of really of honestly of equal importance right 
One of the most important things to take to a firearms class is a notebook and a pen, just so people know. Now, what kind of time investment are, are you talking about? Like what, what, what should people expect if they want to get something out of their membership to a gym, a jujitsu, for, for instance, what, how many days a week or hours a week should they be, should they expect to spend in the gym and make it worth to make it worth it? Mm. Uh, for jujitsu? Yeah. Or for any real martial art, I would say at least twice a week. You get you got to go at least twice a week. Okay, twice a week. Because if you go once a week, that's four times a month. You're just not going to get it. You're not going to have any growth. But a minimum of twice a week. And if you can do more than then that's that's great. Um, but I don't think it would be even. I, I probably wouldn't even bother with once a week. Okay, so if, that, if that's like the time commitment that you can give. You're just gonna be you're just gonna be flailing around and and and, and gassing out like you're not gonna have any. Uh, that, that'd, yeah. that'd be my suggestion. So you wouldn't be able to build a foundation if you're going once a week. You see no growth, no nothing to build from. That makes sense. It makes sense. I mean, it, anything uh, you want to get good at is going. It does retire time commitment, and yeah. it's the most important commodity we have is our time. Yeah. So, and that's that's a hard thing to divide up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. We zipped through everything that I wanted to talk about. Oh, yeah? Well, <laughs> uh, that's fine, man. I mean, I'll talk as for as short or as long as you want. Um, let's see. Do I have any points that uh, are burning my butt that I'd like to talk about when it comes to this stuff? Um, oh, you know, I, and I, I haven't said this for a while. I said this in a, a, a long time ago on Practically Tactical, but as uh, – somebody who's <clears throat> just getting into firearms, let's say, or into uh, just the, the whole self-protection thing, paradigm, if you want to call it that. I want you to understand that you are under no obligation whatsoever to inform or tell or answer any questions about your personal protection plan to anyone. So, you, I, I want to empower you, just say Jeff said, because <laughs> Jeff said so, but a lot of people feel like, you know, maybe you feel guilty or maybe you feel like you need to be able to answer questions for people like, oh, why are you carrying a gun or why do you want a gun? You don't owe them anything as far as a response, even if someone you love or really, or, or a good friend, if you want to inform them, then you do that because you want to, not because you feel obligated to, okay? So own that. This is not, you don't discuss your personal protection plan unless you want to. And I'd also say, I mean, I'm in a different position because I'm an instructor uh, and I'm also trying to really disseminate information out there, but you know, you don't want people to know your capabilities and what you can and cannot do, right? Yeah, you lose, you lose a lot of advantage that way. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, I want people to understand that and, and really own it. And you could be polite, but you, when when you defer, uh, you know defer the com the uh, to comment. Uh, but that's you know that's really important. You can just say, you know what, I don't even I don't really like to talk about that, or um, I don't know, I got to think about it more. Whatever whatever your answer is, you make it. Um, yeah. But but you don't owe anyone anything when it comes to that. That's for you and your and your loved ones. I agree with that. Um, I ask people to, like when I teach a CPO class, for, for, for instance, I ask people to come up with a, a you know, well thought out, polite reason of why you carry. If someone mm -hmm. asks you, it may be, may literally just be, I don't understand why you do this. Can you please tell me why you carry a gun? For instance, in Michigan, we get a lot of people coming across the border from Canada to a couple of big outlet areas, mm -hmm. and they're not allowed to carry handguns. My assistant instructor, Manny, was walking around. His gun was, uh, I think he was trying to close at an Under Armour, whatever, something. Somebody saw his, his gun. So they asked him, and he was extremely polite. Sir, do you mind if I ask you why you're carrying a gun? Are you a police officer? And he went on to explain politely why he carried a gun. But if if he had been just some dingbat that said because my rights and I can and blah blah yeah. blah, then Don't you've just guy. completely completely you know turned this person off. Now everybody that owns a gun in this guy's mind is that guy is the jerk that that 
can't give you five seconds of his time to explain politely and concisively why he carries a gun. You know, yeah. and this is a guy that, you know, he's, he's, go ahead, sorry. Oh, no, 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 finish your thought, please. Uh, this is a guy that, you know, he's a, you know, he's a Marine veteran. He's a former Flint uh, police officer, but, you know, he still carries, obviously, he still carries a gun. Um, we do live near Flint. <laughs> I mean, carry a gun no matter what. I mean, more guns on more hips, more better, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Uh, well, and what you just said is essentially you get more bees with honey. Absolutely. Know? As Absolutely. Lame, of, lame of an old adage that is, it's really the truth. You mm -hmm. know, um, you're not going to get more honey by stinging people. I just, I was trying to reverse that. <laughs> <laughs> but... It, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what I'll tell you what I say to people when they ask me why I carry a gun, um, and I, and I like this is I want to have on my person a lethal force option. That's a good one. Um, another one is if you're out like on a date and they figure out that you got a gun on you or whatever. I like to say this. Uh, well, why do you carry a gun uh, to protect you? Oh, yeah. hey, hey. Oh. <laughs> no. you're so dreamy. <laughs> I mean, and, uh, I mean, the night has just gone a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> so I like that. And I, I like uh, the lethal force option thing. And then if they want, if you want to expound on that more, you could say, because you know, in, in the event that I, somebody is doing something so abhorrent or terrible to someone in uh, around me or to my loved ones or to myself, then I, and it requires that I, uh, you know, shoot them or, or need to use lethal force. I want to have that tool on my person, you know, and then, the, and then, or you could be like a smug dude and be like, because, uh, carrying a cop is, uh, too heavy. <laughs> Yeah. Good answer, bro. Yeah. 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 I, I follow the what you said is pretty much the same thing, but you know, I'm married, so I don't get to do the to protect you, baby. Yeah. I, I don't get to pull that that card. But I follow that up with and I also take classes. I take it upon myself to sacrifice my time and my money. So I'm I'm well educated. And I also not only do I carry a gun, I also carry medical equipment like a tourniquet yeah. and uh, hemorrhagic gauze. So it's for me, it uh, make it very, very well known to the person that's asking yeah. the question. It's not just about me carrying a gun and thinking I'm a tough guy because that's the furthest thing from the truth. There's a whole package that goes along with it. I'm prepared to also help um, in a medical emergency. I'm, pre I'm, help I'm prepared to help in an emergency period, whether it's uh, violence or it's, mm -hmm. hey, there's been an accident. So... Yeah, I, and that's that's another one that I do say is uh, when they say, why do you carry a gun? I say, for the same reason that I carry medical. You right. know, and, and they're like, well, what does that mean? And you say, in the eventuality, there's an emergency. You know, I want to be I want to be able to have an effect on my environment, regardless of what's going on, uh, a beneficial effect. Now, whether that right. you don't want to be a bystander, you don't no, want to be. A I mean, right. you know, not unless I'm just witnessing something and I don't know what's going on. Uh, I want to have the ability to intervene, interact, and be decisive and have, have, have a, you know, a decisive response to anything that happens around me. Really, you know, I want to be able to get CPR. I want to be able to stop blood from leaking out of people. I want to be able to manage an airway. I want to be able to communicate um, uh, well with, with uh, EMS and emergency services. I want to be able to shoot well and accurate and on demand and i want to be able to fight you know i want to be able to have an impact on what's going on around me i like that i like that i think that you know if we can all be if we could all strive for that i think uh, we'd be able to to help a lot of situations yeah certainly certainly and i don't and I, and, and you know if that's the goal and the basis that that you're then um building off of i think i think it's a good one i think it's a uh it's a it's a healthy one as opposed to out of fear right and i think that's where people that may disagree or not not think the same way we do about about guns carrying guns or self-protection is they look at it as fear-mongering 
And yeah. it's kind of, it's odd that I just now that, that just now kind of clicked in my brain as oh we look at this differently. It's not about I'm afraid. It's about well just in case I'm prepared. Yeah, and and that's a really weird thing. And, and p- people that that hate guns, they'll never understand that. And I mean, I I don't blame them. I don't really honestly even care. It's not. I I don't care if they if if they understand it or not. Do I? Would I like for them to? Uh, would I? Am I trying to communicate so that they can at least see where I'm looking from through my lenses? Absolutely. But you know, uh, everybody thinks everything's out of fear, and I want to approach it from a place of empowerment. You know, I spent a lot of my life being very, very motivated by fear, and I'm trying to not feel that way as much anymore. And honestly, like that's we're, we're kind of hard. People are hardwired, I believe. Um, either that, or, or you know, nature versus nurture. Maybe they grew up like that, where some people are motivated to be really good, really be better, and other people are other people are motivated out of fear of failure. And for me, honestly, it, I, I mean, I've, I've been successful in, in most of the things that I've tried that I care about, you know, uh, because of a fear of failure, maybe, or fear of not being able to do what I need to do. Uh, but honestly, that's less healthy than just wanting to be better and good, you know. So that's where another good thing with jujitsu, I think that uh, it allows you to to focus on that and and be like, oh well, I just want to be better at jujitsu, you know. Yeah, I like what you talked about with jujitsu, making uh, helping you be humble. It's important for people to walk around the street not thinking that they're the, they're the toughest guy around, but if the situation should call for it they can handle themselves well enough. Nobody yeah. needs to be walking around thinking that they're just, they're just going to kick the snot out of everybody. Uh, there's, and this is one of the things about martial arts and one of the things about jiu-jitsu that's, that's so important. Uh, but mostly, mostly jiu-jitsu, boxing, kickboxing, things that, that where there is an opposing force uh, that has, uh, you know, is competitive, non-compliant, and has uh, malevolent intent <laughs> to use more of <laughs> yeah. verbiage. You know, uh, you get to actually have an opposing force and opposing will that you're working against. That creates humbleness, you know, you know, because, you know, you may submit the guy next to you and then the guy on the other side, once you roll with him, he destroys you. Now you've been humbled. Understand? So yes, that's, I that's do. That's the way that goes. Um, and it keeps you humble because you're never going to be the best in – well, at least I'm never going to be the best <laughs> you know, in, in, uh, in, in the whole right. like class. There's always going to be some. As a martial artist, uh, you know, we must understand that there's always going to be someone that's better, faster, stronger, uh, has a stronger mindset, is more athletic, is more dangerous, and more willing to use violence quicker. You know. If you don't understand that, then you need to sit down and think about it because then you're starting to think that you're too bad, too cool for school, and that's when you get your butt handed to you. See, I didn't cuss there. Ooh, you owe so me proud. so many drinks. <laughs> <laughs> where the cussing will begin. Okay. Yeah, where the cussing will finally begin to cuss. <laughs> <laughs> it's a deal. It's a deal. Um, so I know that uh, – Okay, Jeff is on the Practically Tactical show. If you guys aren't familiar with that, definitely go check that out. It's one of my, it's probably my favorite show. I've been a Patreon supporter of theirs for quite some time when I met those guys. Jeff, I met you in what, September? Yeah, Freddie was here in September of 16. So I've been a Patreon supporter of you guys since then. So definitely go check out this show. Yeah, we well, thank you. It, you know, we, I, I love the content, like this. I love the show. Um, and now you guys are all, all three of you are my friends. But, um, just a heads up for the, the audience. It's not a family friendly show. There's some rough no. language get used on there. You know, it's a nighttime show. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but there's definitely a lot on there to learn from. Uh, Jeff is on there uh, most of the time. Uh, he's been pretty busy uh, with nursing school and whatnot. But, I should be on there um, pretty much uh, every, every Thursday night for a while. Yeah. Okay. Well, you guys have some listener classes coming up, and some of them, I know one of them's in Michigan, maybe two of them. I know there are a few of them in uh, at Alliance Police Training and oh, Ohio, Indiana? Ohio, Ohio. Yeah, that's Ohio. right, Ohio. Um, so are you going to be making it out to many, if any, of those classes? Yes. Uh, I'm actually, go- I'm so excited because I've been so, I've been getting, I'm, for those of you, 
who don't know, and I wouldn't expect you to, I've been doing a 12 month super uber accelerated uh, nursing BSN program. So and she's been like, crushing it, by the way. Uh, been, yeah, well, I'm still, still in it. So yeah, I hey, haven't but you're... fouled out. <laughs> yeah, I, haven't, I haven't fouled out. So um, so I, I, you know, I haven't been out to Alliance really in, in months, but I'll be out there in March. Um, I'll be taking a you know, William Petty uh, law enforcement officer only class. Um, law enforcement officer only and gay former actor firearms. <laughs> Um, they only had one slot. They only had one slot for them, and I, I was like, "Ooh, I want to be the token! I want to be the token!" Um, but I'll, be taking, I'll be taking that class. Yeah. Oh, jeez. I'll be taking that class, and then we're gonna do a bunch of filming with William Petty, uh, and then we're doing our stuff, and then yeah, there's a class that weekend of handgun diagnostics, which is gonna be taught by Joe Wire. Um, if it's not full already, get in that class. I'm so psyched to take that in class. March, in yeah, March, March. That's class. like March. That's full. Uh, it's full. It's oh, full, yeah. full, full. That's uh, the 10th, 11th? 10th, yeah, and 11th, yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah. It's a Saturday and Sunday. It's full. I was going to get in it. Forgot. It's full. I talked to Nick on the phone yesterday. Full. Yeah. He's one of the best instructors <laughs> that I've ever studied under. Uh, and he's an awesome cat as well. Um, Joe, that Joe Wire. And he um, gives great hugs. Great hugs. Oh, he's so he's so, <laughs> he's so creepy. It's so, just for you though. It's just yeah. for you. He'll hug me and won't let me away for like two minutes. <laughs> Do you know how long? And people are like, ah, oh, two minutes. Think about this. A right. two minute long hug. It's it's traumatizing. <laughs> I, I, I do need to get out there. Uh, I, I have been told more than once that his hand, the, the grip module of handgun diagnostics is worth the whole trip from me driving from Michigan yeah. down to Alliance, Ohio. Yeah. Um, I, I really need to get in there at some point. Even if I have to go down by myself, I do need to, uh, to get in with them. Well, I'm really hoping that I get to see you sometime this year. You know, you're in Philadelphia. I'm in Michigan. So um, I know Freddie's coming back. But that's in September, October. I don't think you're coming for that. Oh, maybe. I mean, I no. If you do, we'll to hang hang out. Are well, you taking cool. the class again or what? Yeah, I'm taking the class again. I, I'm gonna. I'll probably do it every other year. I, I, dude, I enjoyed that class so much. It was, that was such one a of the cool, coolest. Such a cool class, man. Probably one of the coolest classes that I never thought I'd ever take. Right. Right. Um, so Jeff is the city slicker. Okay. Yes. Um, doesn't go anywhere where there's not sidewalks. Uh, and doesn't, I don't go anywhere where there are bugs. Right. Well, we're in the woods, um, in the middle of nowhere, Michigan. Yep. And oh my gosh, it was such, it was so cool. And Jeff actually did amazingly in this class. He did. So did you. We wound up, we found the dude at the end. It was, yes. not, it was not the other people on our team. No. Cause we broke off. We were like, these guys are slow. And we were like, how? We, like, <laughs> we were, we were. It was, it was really cool. I, I, I wouldn't have said it. I'm glad you did. Um, <laughs> uh, but you, you're right. You're right. Um, the other team, they were on some. I don't know some what BS. they were. Doing. Remember, we found Trek's boot prints. We found the bloody axe. You know, the the fake blood axe. Mm -hmm. Actually, somebody else on our team found that. We were just on the trail. We were looking at the ground, and we weren't looking around us. That's what our. You know, if you're the tracker, you're on you're on the ground. Everybody else is supposed to be looking around. So we were still doing our jobs. We missed a big clue. But man, that was such a cool class. And for two guys that started out so miserably, oh, the we, first night, the first day, you tell them, you tell them. It was it was so funny. So like I'm I'm I mean I'm born and bred New Yorker, uh, which is why it's so hard for me not to cuss. <laughs> and um and then you got Matt. Now who even knows where Matt's from? I don't even know if Matt came from this planet, um, which is why we're friends. <laughs> Cause I, 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 I was born in Manhattan vis-a-vis -vis Mars. And at least my father would tell me that what spaceship. <laughs> and, uh, so like after the first day, we stunk at this. And I'm like, I'm like thinking by the end of the day, like we were, and then there was this drill, which is so brilliant, but this drill at the end of day one that is designed to basically make you fail. And which was, so 
brilliant. I'm still thinking about the sheer brilliance behind that so that you come to day two really wanting to learn. And that's exactly what happened. And, and at the end of day, day one, I was looking at Matt. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. This, uh, you know, this uh, tracking stuff. The other, the other guys in the class can do it. And me, I, me you, it's not for us. You know, not everybody should do everything. Not everybody could be the president of the United States of America. You know, I mean, like, I'm never going to be, uh, you know, a four-star chef, you know, in New York City, uh, you know, millions of dollars a year or something like that. It's not going to be me. And the same way with tracking. I'm never going to be a tracker. And by the end of day two, we were like hounds, dude. And that's it. <laughs> I know. Dude, it was the cool. It, that was a literal transformation, you know, except uh, I don't think that either of us lost any weight. We were just transferring. <laughs> you know. Right, right. Well, it, that, that class paid off. And I, I, um, I wrote you, you know, I did a quick write up on what happened to me here at home yeah. about a month or two later. But man, you know, I was actually able to put to use what I used in that class. I found a guy, uh, he was turned around in the dark. He was turned around in the dark, he was deer hunting. Um, it was cool. And I, I tracked this guy in the dark. Um, and it's not because I'm special, it's because of what Freddie teaches and how he teaches. It's just, yeah. my gosh. I'm actually thinking about taking my oldest son to that class with me. He'll be 10 by then. Oh, that'd be and, uh, awesome, dude. That would be awesome. And he's pumped, man. He want, he loves going out in the woods. He loves shooting. He's, yeah. I think when he was seven, we started him shooting uh, Glock 19, Glock 17, and AR. He's got his own 20-gauge pump. I mean, awesome. trying to raise him up right. We got two other boys, too. They're just not as into it. Yeah, that, so. and, and uh, that's just a testament to, to Freddie Asuna of, of Greenside Training. Um, is just how how he made us tracker me like New York City. Are you kidding me? That was like that's why I say it, it was the best class that I never thought I would have taken. Because I'm like, what do you know? I'm not gonna be good at that. I'm a tracking. What you know? I don't, yeah, even, I like, did, I don't yeah. even like camping. Let alone tracking. <laughs> <laughs> right, but how many areas in your life can you take what you learned and apply it? I mean, it doesn't have to be about finding tracks. It's about you have to take the class. You got to take yeah. the class. You know, and, and, and the one thing that I will say without giving anything away is that I incorporate because I, you know, I live in, a, in an asphalt and concrete city, uh, and I haven't taken his gray side training or uh, tracking, which right. really sounds interesting. Which is urban tracking, which I would love to take. But the one one of the things that I do a lot is I'll just stop and look and listen and smell and reorient myself. And I pick up a lot more uh, stimuli, especially um, uh, uh, what, nasally, what do you would call it? Uh, olfactory senses? Olfactory, you know, I'll pick up a lot more stuff. Like I'll walk out my, outside my door and I'll smell the cologne of the guy that just walked by. Yeah. Or, uh, you know, all that stuff. And it's just like, that's cool. That's, that's lasting and memorable. You know, I probably need... And, you know, to do that class again because it's been two years to get some of the things down. But he, he does such a good job of explaining it. Like if I'm thinking thinking back about the way the shoe lands and about like the degrees and all that stuff, like that's so cool. Yes. And it's, it's not hocus pocus. And he goes out of his way to explain the fact that this is a, a, a scientific approach to tracking as opposed to, well, I feel he's going that way. So we're going to go, you know, I feel like the, the, the dinosaur is over there. It's not about that. It's like, hey, let's look at these. Let's let's analyze these track marks and see what we can deduct from that. Super cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I like that. Yeah. Well, hey, uh, Jeff, I really appreciate you coming on the show, giving us your time and talking with us. Is there anything you'd like to say in closing? Uh, thank you so much for having me. You know, I, I can't wait to hang out with you again, man. And uh, hopefully next time I'm on the show, if you'll have me back on, Alex will be here and – uh, yeah, I mean, for more information, uh, go to armeddynamics.com, which I'm sure they'll put in the description box uh, for training with me. I'm in the Philadelphia, Pennsylvania area, and then I'll probably be doing some group classes by the end of the year, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? So, yeah. yeah. Jeff has been teaching only private classes for, for, for the, some time. For the past couple of years, yeah. Yeah. So you're talking about doing some actual group classes now. Yeah. Yeah. Now, will they all be in Philadelphia? You're going to be doing no, some listener probably, classes? What are you listen to classes through practically tactical. Ooh. So all right, guys, they'll be pimped out there. You know, we'll we'll make sure that everybody knows 
Um, and then, uh, yeah, and go to practicallytactical.com, check out our YouTube. Uh, that I don't really have an internet presence other than when I get invited on shows like this. Okay. <laughs> uh, but, okay. but also yeah. on Practically Tactical. I, I Arm Dynamics is my training company. Um, and uh, so if you want to kind of hear me talk more, <laughs> then go to Practically Tactical and uh, you can check check me out there. Yes, uh, Practically Tactical, you can hear Jeff uh, Uncensored. Uh, but Jeff has been on my short list of people to train with, you know, since since I met him, especially. So now that you're going to be doing some uh, group classes and listener classes, guys, you're hearing it here, uh, and girls, guys and girls, uh, go follow Practically Tactical on uh, Facebook, Instagram, follow their YouTube page or subscribe, uh, and and you know, make sure you're watching to see when uh, when Jeff is coming up. Well, check out all of their their listener classes, but definitely make sure you can. Uh, follow and see when Jeff is teaching uh, a listener class. If it's at all possible for me, I will be there. And Alex probably will too. Cool. I'd love to have you, man. All right. Well, Jeff, thank you so much for your time, man. We will definitely have you back on the show. Um, we're, you're welcome to come on anytime you want. I know you're busy, so thank you very much for your time today. Um, guys, gals, thank you very much for tuning in and watching. If you have any questions about the show, any questions about Jeff, uh, shoot us a message, shoot Jeff a message, and we'll put some things in the, uh, put some links in the box below. And uh, actually, this Saturday, we're going to be going out to Grand Rapids, Michigan to do some work with Holland's, uh, Holland Tactical Solutions. We'll have some video and podcast probably going live right from their shop. So tune in for that. Be on the lookout for it. You guys have a great day.